but we're going to do a change of pace and bring in the bloke who really his lounge room of a Sunday night, repeating on a Saturday night, the voice of the TV show Countdown, which was compulsory viewing uh, through the 70s and 80s and maybe a bit longer. He'll tell us more about it. The bloke is Gavin Wood. He joins us from Melbourne. Gav, it's great to have you on the program. Welcome back home. Well, Gary, it's great to be here and it's great to talk to you. You and I go back in our early radio days, right back to 4BC and 4IP when they were in opposition to each other in Brisbane back in the late 70s. That's 40 years ago, my friend. Well, I, I'd say we actually met mid-70s and I was about 12 and you were about 14. So, you know, <laughs> mate, I understand that. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, it's a long... It's a long time ago. The earth was green. People had unicorns as pets. I mean, we all know that that is true, isn't it? Uh, yeah. But Countdown, mate, yeah. you were a superstar in radio, the radio the early days. Tell us about that. How did you get started in radio? Because the voice uh, of radio, uh, the intimacy of radio, I don't think many people really never you know, stop and think about the fact we remember voices perhaps more than we remember things we see. Well, once it's in your blood, it never goes away, Gary, as you know. And uh, I started in radio. I was a singer in a couple of bands in Brisbane, very badly. Uh, and I was working at the Brisbane <laughs> City Council as a clerk. And uh, I was driving my 64 Holden panel van home after work one day. And I heard an ad on 4BH for the Ben Beckinsale Radio School. And I thought, gee, that would help me between the songs so I could... So I could talk to the audience. So I, there I was, Tuesdays and Thursdays, going up the steps of 4BK on Adelaide Street. And, uh, and I got into the radio course and I thought, wow, this is fantastic. It's, uh, I can play popular music, which I love, and uh, I can also um, talk. And you know me, Gary, I love to talk. So, so I, I just totally consumed it. And uh, my mother called me. I was a clerk uh, further on at Thies Peabody Mitsui. 22nd floor of the TNG building, and I got that phone call. My mother called and said, could you call Ben Beckinsale at 4BH? And I got, yes! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Frank, Frank well, Warwick, former, former, new, former newsreader at Channel yeah. 7, was the general manager at 4MB at the time, and he gave me my first job. So Mirabra was your first job. I mean, the point here is it's so much harder now for a lot of people to get into radio. I mean, oh, radio has yeah, become a... Yeah a very hard thing to enter. To get that sort of uh, golden moment start that you just talked about uh, is a similar story to me, but I mean, it's hard to get in, isn't it? It, it is now because they have, they have a live breakfast show on the radio and the rest is uh, coming in from other areas all around the country. Uh, a mate yeah. of mine in Los Angeles was a, a DJ and he would go into a little studio and he'd put down voice tracks for 54 radio stations right across the Midwest of America. And that's the way, unfortunately, radio's gone. It's, it's, it's forgotten about the, the local. And that's why community radio stations are getting stronger and stronger. Yeah, well, look, this is a live television program. We're coming out of Brisbane. I mean, we produce a lot of live TV, Sky, out of Brisbane, which is fantastic. You're in Melbourne, so I know you're going to come back to Brisbane in a few weeks' time. But Countdown, let's talk about Countdown, mate. I went down there once, took down some kids who'd won a competition when I was at 4IP as a Rocky Jockey. We went down one I Saturday remember. Uh, for, <laughs> for, for the taping. Uh, you know, mate, it, it was, without doubt... Uh, an amazing thing to see and to witness, uh, the vibe, the buzz, the hits, the misses. Tell us some stories. Well, I, I was lucky, Gary. You know, a, a radio announcer has a, you know, a, a good career on radio, but I was actually at the right place at the right time. I was doing breakfast at 3XY. I'd just moved down from Brisbane. I still had the Volvo with the Queensland plates on. And Paul Turner, who was a <laughs> DJ at, 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 at 3XY, came into my studio and said, mate, what are you doing at 9 o'clock? And Paul spoke like that. Lovely man. Uh, sadly not with us anymore, but Paul said, uh, can you drive me down to Ripon Lee? I went, yeah, sure, I'm not doing anything. So I drove him down to Ripon Lee. I was prepared to sit in the car and let him go and do, do his business. He said, no, come in with me. So as I went in, I walked into a studio and there was the top ten on the table and I said, uh, what's that? He said, sit down and sound like me. 
I said, what? He said, yes, yeah, sound like me. So I said, okay. I went, number 10 on the countdown. Da, 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 da. And I, I did it all. And just when I finished, Robbie Weeks and uh, Grant Rule came into the studio and said, you're now the new voiceover on Countdown. Paul is leaving the show, going to Sydney to, to be a producer on Nostradamus. Remember the quatrains that Channel 7 produced back yes. in the uh, late oh, 70s? Yes. Yes. So, uh, yeah. so uh, I, I picked up the job and he said, oh, and by the way, you start with $60 a week. And it, the, the greatest gig of all time just fell in my lap. I was just at the right place at the right time. It was, it was amazing. But Countdown was a, a magnificent ride. Molly Meldrum, of course, I was too scared to talk to Molly for the first 12 months. I was t in total awe of him. And then we, <laughs> then we gradually you know, started saying a few things. And then we found out we're both Aquarians and we're both mad. So um, <laughs> that, uh, and then a, a great friendship grew from that. And I think the beauty of Countdown was we didn't take it for granted. It went to every corner of Australia. And our, our job and Molly's job was to push Australian music to the world. Yeah, and, and what a great job you did. I mean, mate, you're getting paid $60 a week to do that. I was $50 a week on Boris's Breakfast Club. G'day, Eric Summons. I know he's watching tonight. Uh, uh, doing O'Toole, the puppet. I mean, the things we do, uh, the hits, the misses, the big... What? Give us one memory of a great song that you couldn't believe made it and one that you thought would make it and didn't. Well, a band like Oingo Boingo, you, you wouldn't think they would make it, but, the, but they made it. Uh, the, my, my greatest thing I, I nobody really picked it up and I can tell you Gary this is an exclusive uh, the Ramones were the headliners this one week and Joey Ramon and the rest yep. of the guys had hair down to here and they and they couldn't see the cue cards and so in the dress rehearsal everybody was really <laughs> really nervous we're going oh this is going to be a disaster because Joey would go oh I can't read the cue cards man they'll have to come closer you know and I, and we're all going, oh, no. So we were so pent up. Come the time, and we wanted to do Countdown as a live show. So come the time for me to introduce the band, I said, and now please welcome live on Countdown, the, the Maroons, instead of the Ramones. <laughs> ah, I love and it, I love it. A, a anyway, true you're Queenslander. <laughs> Well done to you. Hold, hold, hold five, because unlike the ABC, we've got to keep the lights on by uh, paying, uh, playing a few commercials. We'll be back to talk to Gavin Wood about his time in L.A. and a whole lot more in just a moment. You're watching Hardgrave on Sky News Live. Thanks so much uh, for your company uh, tonight and we're in conversation with Gavin Wood, the voice of Countdown. Uh, and Gavin, you know, you've been in LA for the last 11 years, 11 years over there getting around that town. I mean, the difference between Australia and there, obviously bigger, louder, lots of things going on. Uh, but I mean, how's Australia changed while you've been away? It's got bigger. <laughs> My son came over for the last two weeks of November and helped me pack. And uh, Mackenzie and I were driving <laughs> through the Balti and uh, we looked at, uh, we, he said, wait till you see the city of Melbourne. And all of a sudden the city of Melbourne unfolded and it was twice the size in, in 11 years. Yeah. And, and there's cranes yeah. on so many buildings. Obviously the in interest rates are so low that uh, everyone's taking advantage of it. But it looks magnificent because all the buildings are different architecturally. They're fantastic. And all architects all, all say when you walk through a city you should always look up. And it's, it's so pleasing to see that they're not just uh, glass boxes. And uh, that pleased me a lot. I was up at Brisbane, in Brisbane over Christmas, and, and the city, the, the, uh, the clam, uh, all the freeways, all the, all the roads are so beautiful compared to LA roads full of potholes. Uh, very, very fortunate to live in this country. This is a fantastic country, and I'm so pleased to be home. Oh, I love it. We're talking roads, rates and rubbish because Brisbane is getting better all the time. But, I mean, Gavin, let's, let's talk about uh, Los Angeles, the culture, the tradition, obviously, Hollywood and everything like that. The Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant uh, death the other week. I, I know we, we talked that morning. Uh, you, you were rocked by that. I mean, that really does go to the heart and soul of one of LA's great icons. Well, it goes to the heart and soul of everybody, Gary. You know, he was a, he was a national treasure. Uh, what he did with basketball and also what he did after basketball he was a he was a, as they say an ornament to the game but he was he was a he was a figurehead that everybody looked up to he was a fabulous uh, a, an incredible basketballer an incredible person an incredible family man 
And he went to church that morning uh, before the fatal uh, helicopter crash. Uh, so a, a very deep religious man as well. And everybody just loved Kobe. He could have played for any team and uh, it, it would have been a sellout every time he played. It, it was just such a shock for the whole country and for the world. He was just one of those guys. You know, he was up there with, uh, you know, Princess Diana. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's astonishing. Of course, the last couple of days, a fellow who's passing that none of us would be surprised by, except the fact he lived 103 years. Uh, you know, the, the son of Russian Jewish immigrants, uh, the son of a ragman, uh, Kirk Douglas. Uh, again, you know, with the Academy Awards coming on next week, I mean, Hollywood is going to turn that on. I hope they get a tribute to Douglas Wright, Kirk Douglas, because what an amazing actor for a long time. Well, Gary, as you know, in, in television, you know, you get your archival material together when certain people get up to a certain age. And Kirk has been <laughs> at that certain age for many years. So if they don't get it right, they should give up the business. Uh, he, of course, uh, as an actor, uh, absolutely incredible. Spartacus, you know, I was a young boy at the Capitol Theatre in Roma when I saw Spartacus, you know, and, <laughs> and, and, and it kind of stays with you for the rest of your life. And uh, there's the Kirk Douglas Theatre in LA. He puts so much back into the arts. Uh, so does the whole family. Catherine Zeta-Jones, of course, uh, Mike, uh, Michael Douglas's uh, wife. They, uh, they do so much for the uh, film uh, industry in, uh, in Los Angeles. It's, it, you know, they are the, the royal family of film when you come to think about it. Well, I mean, Gavin, and, and, and Douglas's widow, his wife of 60-plus years, Anna, she's about to turn 100. Uh, mm. uh, I mean, these are big numbers. These are, uh, you know, astronomical, multi-generational touchstone numbers. Uh, Kirk Douglas stories, you talk about Spartacus, uh, but uh, the movie that he did uh, about Vincent van Gogh's uh, life, or Vincent van Gogh's life, depending on which part of Scotland you come from, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, an extraordinary, extraordinary actor across a range of things. The man from Snowy River was in that as well. I mean, yes. it's just, yeah. I don't know whether there'll ever be anybody quite as great, as quite as monumental, quite as long living uh, as this bloke. I'd like to know what's in the water and, and if we could have lots of it over here, it would be fantastic. <laughs> to live to 103, what a, what a great achievement. And, and, and only had a, a stroke a few years back and lost a little bit of function, but, but was still sharp and bright and, and, and all of that. And what a body of work that Kirk Douglas had. And of course, as you say, it ranged you know, in, in, in the whole spectrum of acting. He was, he was an actor's actor. And uh, Hugh Jackman and Deborah Lee Finesse did that play uh, reading the love letters that uh, Kirk wrote to his wife. They put out a book. And so what a great homage to the uh, Douglases. You know, Gavin, we've got uh, Tom Hanks watch going on here in South East Queensland because Tom Hanks is on the, uh, the Gold Coast in between rain yeah. and uh, other filming uh, delays. He's trying to make a film. I mean, there are Hollywood mega stars. There are people who jump out. But you would have seen in your couple of years there, and I know you, you, know, you don't want to diss anybody, but there would have been some who didn't quite measure up to the, to the hype. Uh, you don't need to name names. But I mean, how does Hollywood actually sort the, the wheat from the chaff, so to speak? Well, the bad ones don't last. It's that simple. You know, if you have an... <laughs> why does every star, when they win an Oscar or a Golden Globe, why do they get up and say, I am so honoured and thrilled and grateful for this? Because if they don't say that, yeah. they don't work the next day. You know, you, you, you have to yeah. have that grateful attitude. And Tom Hanks, I saw him filling up his Prius at a, at a service station. That was a big buzz for me. And also a friend of mine is an Aussie uh, director. His son and, and, and uh, Tom Hanks' son, they were in the same music school. Uh, playing guitar together. So I went along to one of the recitals and here's Tom and Rita, mum and dad, sitting down filming their son on stage playing guitar. It was a very sweet moment. Mate, that's only a couple of degrees of separation. I'd like to have dinner with Tom Hanks sometime next week. Can you just call your friend to ring the son, to ring your son, to whatever, and <laughs> make it happen? Your people, ring my people. I want to do lunch with Tom Hanks. <laughs> well, well, Gary, as you know, in, in Hollywood and Beverly Hills, they all hide behind their big hedges and their big gates, and you don't even yeah. know who's be, whose houses they are. But I must tell you that Leo DiCaprio, he drives around in an old Prius and a baseball cap, and no one, no one sees him. Uh, it, it's, it, no. On the other hand, I saw Neil Sedaka 
I was uh, driving home after I saw Fabio, yeah. you know, the long-haired, muscle-bound, yeah, romance yeah, yeah, novel yeah, guy. Yeah. Fabio was in an Italian yeah. restaurant and, and he got up to leave and he dropped his credit card and I, uh, I just went and I pointed to the credit card on the ground and he looked down, picked up the credit card, gave me the thumbs up and walked out. That was my Fabio moment. So then as I'm driving home down Sunset, down into La Cienega, across the other way coming up La Cienega was this magnificent Bentley convertible. And I looked, I would looked at the car first and I went, wow, that's a fantastic car. And I looked at the driver and it was Neil Sedaka. Uh, and uh, another oh, night. You uh, love it. Oh. oh yeah, and uh, another one, one night the, I was one in. One of the love, one of the lovely, one, one of the loveliest blokes I've ever met, Neil Sadak. Gavin, we could talk all night. We can't. Oh, I've got to, okay. I've got to sort of go to the news. But look, Gavin Wood, great to talk with you. You're coming to Brisbane soon, and I look forward to catching up to you face to face, mate. You, you've been a, a real gem. Come back again. Good on you, Gary. Love to. All the very best to you, mate. Gavin Wood, the voice of Countdown news coming up next. And the panel as well. You're watching Hard Grave on Sky News Live.